The, the photograph upon your screen was taken within one year following this occasion. It was taken of Vincent standing beside the shrine statue of Our Lady of the Roses. This can be seen, Our Lady statue disappears completely except for a small portion of the blue mantle present still in the lower right hand corner. But now covering the majority of the picture, you'll see in side back profile the head of our Holy Father Pope John Paul II looking downward in this direction. Tracing out some of the features, this would be the white skull cap, the forehead, the darkened area being the left eye, the nose, the white papal garments of our Holy Father, Pope John Paul II. The next series of photographs, again will be photographs taken of Veronica in ecstasy. Photographs taken of Veronica at the time she's actually seeing our Blessed Mother and our Lord. Again, photograph of Veronica in ecstasy. Interesting point I'd like to bring up before I go any further on in the presentation is that all of those who have been privileged to be near Veronica during the time that she is in ecstasy, they will all confirm the fact that during the whole time Veronica is in ecstasy, Veronica will not blink. Veronica will not blink her eyes. This can be from time periods exceeding 30 to 45 minutes. It can be during times in which there are raindrops or snowflakes falling directly into her face and eyes or times in which there are flashballs from cameras flash directly into her face. But during the time Veronica is in ecstasy, Veronica will not blink. I have to call your attention again to the crucifix Veronica is holding in her hands. Our Lord, in his message of July 25, 1978, told Veronica that she would spend the rest of her earthly existence in great physical suffering. Veronica has been chosen by heaven to be a victim soul, to suffer in reparation for the sins of mankind. In consequence of this mission, Veronica suffered a massive heart attack in December of 1978. Veronica suffered many repercussions from this heart attack since. Veronica today currently suffers from diabetes, from arthritis, from a hiatal hernia. Veronica also suffers from an inverted disc disease. In 1980, after a long illness, the surgeons in New York City removed from Veronica very large gallstones. In 1981, Veronica suffered a minor stroke. She was paralyzed in half of her body for nearly one full month. In the past three to four years alone, Veronica has been in and out of the hospitals more than 10 times. Again, she's been chosen by heaven to be a victim's soul, to suffer. And as such, we ask that you keep her in your prayers daily. Photograph taken of Veronica at a holy hour, 1975. In her hands, Veronica is holding a placard about purity and dress. The placard reads, Mary Purity, do you love me? Imitation is the best compliment. No shorts, no slacks, covered knees, covered body. Picture you're looking at was taken upon the vigil grounds on the evening of June 18th, 1983 the 13th anniversary vigil of Our Lady's first appearance at Bayside. This was the largest vigil ever held at Our Lady of the Roses Shrine. The police estimated between 12 to 15,000 people were present upon the vigil grounds that evening. Second crowd shot to the same vigil. NBC, CBS, and ABC Television, the three major networks had film crews upon the vigil grounds that evening. And they broadcast segments of this vigil upon your local affiliate stations in New York City. Those of you in the future who have the opportunity to attend one of the vigils at the Shrine, if you were to come to the vigil grounds early, meaning prior to 4 p.m. on a vigil date, if you came to the vigil grounds on a date at which a vigil is not being held, this is what you would find. This is the Vatican Pavilion site. This is the spot blessed by His Holiness Pope Paul VI during his visit in 1965. And it is upon this site that the workers bring Our Lady Shrine statue. Our Lady Shrine statue without vigil adornment. Our Lady Shrine statue is then dressed and adorned as you are now looking at it upon this picture. Again, the majority of the miraculous photographs taken at the shrine are photographs taken by pilgrims with their own cameras are taking photographs of the shrine statue of Our Lady of the Roses. 
but there are exceptions to this as the next three photos you'll be seeing are. For example, this photo was taken of the sky directly above Our Lady's Shrine statue. And appearing in the photograph is Our Lord. You will see Our Lord with His arms extended out in front of Him. Our Lord's garments extending downward. But you note in the picture Our Lord's head is not present. It is missing. And it is symbolic of Our Lady's message. For Our Lady has told us that the mystical body shall be without its head. And who is the head of the mystical body? But the Pope, the Vicar of Christ, the visible head of the Church. There have been many messages in the past four to five years in which our Blessed Mother has warned us about the danger to the safety and to the life of our current Holy Father, Pope John Paul II. And we are asking you today that you keep our Holy Father, Pope John Paul II, in your prayers each and every day. Taken at the vigil, June 18, 1973. Veronica was not present at this vigil. She was in the hospital on this date with a kidney infection. Present in the photograph, for those interested, you will see Veronica's husband, Mr. Arthur Lucan. The man from Pennsylvania, though, who took this picture was actually taking a photograph of Veronica's empty chair. And miraculously appearing upon his photograph is this red beam of light, which from above descends downward onto Veronica's empty chair. The meaning of this beam of light is that Jesus and Mary are present at each and every vigil, whether Veronica is present upon the vigil grounds or not. So ladies and gentlemen, if you come to Our Lady of the Roses Shrine for the first time, and if Veronica is not present because of illness, Please do not feel discouraged or think that you missed out on any graces. You did not. Jesus and Mary are still present. They are there to hear your prayers, your petitions, and grant the graces for yourself, for your families, for all those that you may be come to Our Lady's sacred grounds to pray for. This is a very interesting, miraculous photograph. It was taken by Mr. Francis Wasmer at the vigil of March 25th, 1975. And about 10 months ago, I talked to Mr. Wasmer about how he took the photograph, and he told me that in the night he took the picture that it was a pitch black night. He said there were no moon or stars in the sky at all that evening. And he said what he did is aim his camera directly up at this pitch black sky and snap the photograph. And this is the picture that came out of his camera. You see upon this miraculous photograph the devil in the form of a red dragon beaming his evil rays downward into a television set. In front of the TV set sets a closed Bible. Tracing this out for you, this would be the red dragon beaming his rays downward into a television set. For it clear to see, you will see the screen. In front of the TV screen sets the closed Bible. This photograph symbolizes Our Lady's message. For Our Lady has told us, that many of the television programs today are portraying a way of life that is not godly, and that they are taking many people away from precious time and moments that could be spent in prayer, meditation, spiritual reading, praying the rosary, of course also reading the Holy Bible. Taken at the All Souls Vigil 1974, a Blessed Mother that evening in her message pleaded for prayers for the poor souls in purgatory. A lady from Astoria, New York, present at this vigil with her camera, took a photograph of Our Lady's statue. And appearing above the head of Our Lady's statue are faces. These are the poor souls in purgatory, coming to Our Lady's sacred grounds beseeching prayers. Do not forget the poor souls. Those are your family, your relatives, your friends. All of those have gone on and died before you. Just because you may not hear purgatory mentioned very often today in the sermons in your churches, this doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Purgatory does exist. In fact, our Lord himself has told us in his message that purgatory today is overflowing. As there are many souls abandoned and forgotten by their loved ones upon earth. Taken September 14, 1971, a man with a Polaroid camera took a photograph of Our Lady's shrine statue. Again, being a Polaroid camera, the photograph developed instantly right before the man's very eyes. In an eerie, supernatural scrawl, across the picture appear the words Jacinta, 1972. Now Jacinta, some of you may recall, is one of the 